everybody, I'm back. I'm still Kyle, and today we're going to upload some NFTs to NFT Maker Pro. Thank you very much for joining me. I'm going to keep the speed high, high energy, high drama. Let's do this. Okay, last time we left off, we were in a position where you were generating the actual JSON data, ready to pump it up to NFT Maker Pro. There's some tiny things, tiny, tiny little mistakes I made. I hope you'll forgive me. They're very quick to solve. If we go back up here, you will see in a couple of the attributes I've put, <laughs> and this is a common thing that I was always missing. I've put this bit, this bit, and this bit in the string wrapper. Otherwise, because that's got www dot in it, and so is that one. And I think that that's because it takes that as a number, an integer, sorry, it messes it up. So if you're in doubt, wrap it in a string and it will force it be to become a string variable. Without that in place, um, we've then got to add some code to the bottom here of our method. Um, so if we hit enter, what we're going to do now is actually attempt to push something up to NFT Maker Pro here. And you can see that we've got project number 22286. We got this number here. I want you to copy that straight away. Um, that'll be your project and that'll be the metadata that you've set up and all that good stuff should have zeros in it apart from one in max supply back into PyCharm and we're just going to put hash and drop that there we're going to need that in a moment and then we're going to grab this bit as well that we already put if you remember from the last one this is our api key and that's our project id so first things first up to the top Make sure you've imported requests, else this won't work. If you're not sure how to do that, uh, literally go to YouTube and put in um, how to use pip, that's the Python module installer, and it will then, uh, you'll notice as well, if it's working correctly, this should not be highlighted. It should just look like everything else that we've used so far. Right, let's get back to it. And we're inside our upload one NFT method and we're gonna scroll down and we're back here. Now, first things first, we're gonna write as follows. So we're gonna do base API call equals, and then we're gonna put in this web address here. So just take a read of that carefully. And if you're very interested in the API, um, what you wanna do is come into this bit and go to API documentation, and it'll come up with this thing called Swagger UI. Now, if you're a bit more advanced, this is where you want to be going, really. You won't need to worry about my tutorial. We're going to be using this method. You can see it's a post method. Um, and if we open that out, you can see here, it looks for an API key and a project ID. And then you can actually see there's some test data in there. But anyway, we're not going to bother with that. I'm just going to show you how to do it. You can see how slash upload NFT slash, and then you've got API key there. And that's exactly how we've written this, right? Slash upload NFT slash API key. And then we're going to do another thing, which is like this. We're going to put full API call. Oops. Equals. In fact, no, we're just going to overwrite that. So base API call equals base API call. So as above plus, and then we're going to put in, because we've already got a slash on the end. We're just going to drop that in there like that. Good. We're going to now say upload call. Um, upload post equals uh, requests dot post. Oh, you might have saw there. It asks for URL and JSON, and my laptop's heating up a lot. <laughs> uh, it's looking for a URL and some JSON, so we're going to give it the URL, which is our base API call, which now looks like this, and then we're going to give it JSON equals final JSON, which, as we know, is this thing that we've built. And now um, I'm just going to tidy up. I'm going to delete a lot of print statements and things so it's easy for you to see what we've done. And we'll go from there one second. And then we come back down. And all we should have to do, guys, is run it as we did before. Let's see what happens. OK, this is a good sign. So it's a post done. And then in here, you can see the actual thing that it's sent up. So the actual JSON. All right. Um, you can see it's pretty weird, to be quite honest, how it looks. Um, and just for you guys, I've actually gone and uh, uploaded an actual image of Abu. Um, but you can see here we've got the website, we've got Twitter, 
So let's see if we come back to here, back to our project and we refresh this page, you can see now we've got NFT count of one. Okay, so we're looking good. If we go in here, manage NFT, we can see we've only gone and put a boo on there. We're looking good. This is the pure joy when you see this moment. This is great. But has the metadata worked? Let's see. Show the metadata. Okay. So first thing, you can see the file, the actual uh, file identifier is different from the name we've given it. So that's good. We've got an image, which is an IPFS hash. Great. Serial number looks good. The series code's correct. Okay. Okay. It's all looking good. And just remember, roughly this, we've got Dusk, Field Gold, Translucent, Yellow, Cheeky Smile, Pirate. We've got our website in there. And I'm just going to copy this for now. You'll see what we do with that in a moment. Uh, okay, we'll click that, fine. And let's hit OK. And now we can see he is indeed a pirate that's yellow with the cheeky eyes, the smile, the dusk at night. We're looking really good now. So we're back in pool.pm slash test slash metadata. We drop our JSON in here. We can see absolutely brilliant. Guys, look what we've done. So this tells you exactly, once this is minted on the blockchain, what it will look like. And we can see here, we've got a name. So this is the only thing. <laughs> Terrible spelling. But the idea of this was just to show you that you can put um, a different name, okay? You can see we've got the serial number, series code. That is now absolutely beautiful. And what we can say here is if I just grab this, oops, boo crew like that, and then we go in here and we, oops, we put a capital B. There you go. That is now the full name and that looks absolutely brilliant. Now, I cannot encourage you guys enough to really check this like a lot. And I would say, test it with multiple um, different pieces of art. I would say we should probably pick some more random numbers in here, all of that good stuff and make sure with absolute certainty that it shows what you actually want it to, all right? So in my code here, the name, I think what I'll actually do is, you see how I've done description? I think I'm gonna replace that with uh, the same thing that's in description, all right? And the reason for that is that um, just gonna give a bit more detail. In fact, no, we'll just say, yeah, Bukuru Series A and then that number, all right? But you now have the power to upload everything. The rest of this tutorial is gonna be about optimizing that process because there's a limit on how many API calls you can do in a, a second. And there's also different things about data throughput that we wanna optimize. But I'm sure you're just as happy as me. Look at what we've done together. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. I'll see you in a second. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna show you the most consistent, simple to explain way of getting this done in bulk all right so i'm going to give you something where you can run it one time it will run it might take some time to run and to be fair depending on the size of your files you're going to be uploading a lot of data anyway just to give you an idea 10,000 files at um, even a megabyte per image would be about 10 gig so you know that alone is a lot of data and then we've also got to initiate Lots. So um, what I've done, I've, you remember in this method here, I've created this other bit. I've, I've basically pulled the data out of this part and I've, I've created this method here. Um, and that was just me having a look. And you can see essentially all we're doing is rather than doing that in the, in the one method where we actually build the JSON, um, we've got a second method here which uploads it and that just keeps it a little bit tidy. What we're going to do now is we're going to make a new thing called def um, upload multi NFT and we're going to have start end like that. That They're going to be the actual values we want to start and end from because you might want to do this in batches. It all depends on how big your project is, um, how long you want to leave the computer on. And I want to give you the ability to kind of do it in stages because the worst thing about this would be if you get halfway through, you find an error or something goes wrong and then you're left 
at row number 2841 and you can't go anywhere. So let's keep it flexible. What we're going to do then is we're going to go like that. We're going to say final JSON equals and what you call it. So remember down here, we've got csv.read. Let's do that within the method. So first thing we do is read that. Then we can say final JSON equals uh, make JSON, which is what I've renamed what was upload NFT to, if you remember this one. Um, and that now returns some JSON, as I said before. So we can say make JSON for, and we're gonna say I in range, and we're gonna say start, comma, end. And what we're gonna find is that doesn't necessarily work as we want it to. So we're gonna say start minus one, <laughs> and then end plus one, and then that will actually do what we want. Then we're gonna pull this back out. We're gonna put this above because we wanna run that first, and then we can do this. So there we go, make JSON, and we're gonna say df.ilock i, and then we're gonna simply say, sorry, upload JSON, and we're gonna give it final JSON there. So let's just take that method, and then we're gonna quickly go down here, Let's comment all that out, uh, get rid of that. We don't need that anymore. We don't need that either. So this is now our new run zone. And I'm going to just drop upload multi NFT. And the last thing I'll show you, I've created 12 images that just look like this. I don't want to like fill a blockchain up with <laughs> loads of booze that are not actually part of my collection. I think that's a bad idea. So they're all the same image, but they're from one to 12. And we'll just see what happens if we give it one, four, like that. Sorry, when I was doing some testing, I put this in brackets like that. So I was trying to make like a list of JSON. Just delete that so it looks like this, how we had it before. If you just copied it out of this method, it will be fine. Just take a second to check that. Let's run it now. Okay, so it's done something. Okay, so first of all, we can see it's ran five. So let's have a look what we've got. Let's refresh that. And we've got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so what we'll do then is we know that actually we want to make that just end there like this. And then if I just go in here and we delete these. Let's run that again. And we're expecting, as we said down here, that it uploads one to four. So let's do that. Let's refresh the page again. And we can see we've got one, two, three, and four. Perfect. And let's just check the metadata at number three. And there we go. Perfect. So that's it. Now, the big thing you want to be aware of is, as I said, look at the size of your files. You can see mine are, you know, kilobytes here, right? So it's nothing. But if you've got huge files, you want to be, you want to be a bit careful. The other thing I've not shown you here is, and um, there's a few things. So first of all, we want to add some print stamps in here. So we're going to say if I uh, modulus, and just for our testing, I'm going to keep this small. What I'd recommend is that you do this every sort of like 100. Um, I'm going to do it every three. All right, equals uh, zero like that. So what we're saying is if I divided by three has no remainder, all right, then we want to print um, row, whoops, I want to say row number like that, plus the string here of i. And the other thing we want to do is there's a limit on the amount of API calls you can make. Now, if we've got a 10,000 project, we're going to be making a lot of API calls. And as you can see, that there was just flushing the data through as fast as it could. We actually want to deliberately limit that. Um, and we're going to put a wait statement in. And the way you do that is like this. All right, so we're going to go up to the top and we're going to import a library called time. <laughs> um, and then we're going to go back to our method here. And we're going to say, uh, simply put, we're going to put time, oops, dot sleep, 0 0.2, like that. And then we're going to try running that. I'm also going to ask it to upload all 12 of them now. Okay, so let's run that. Okay, 
So there you go. You could see it was printing out the row number. It had a bit of a weight in there. That's all deliberate. Now, if your files are massive, you probably don't want to bother adding a weight in because even 0.2 seconds times 10,000 is obviously 2,000 seconds. And that's just over half an hour, just in waiting time there. So pretty heavy. However, the, the whole point of this is that you only do this one time. And in actuality, the fact that you have to kind of wait this long forces you to make sure your metadata is right. Because the worst thing possible would be that you release this stuff and you've got a problem with it or you don't like how it looks um, or anything like that. And you can see I've got all oh, from 1 to 10 here. And you can see they've gone onto another page. And if I open up this metadata here, you can see its name like that and everything else about it. So there you go. You can now, I would say, experiment with it. Make sure you're happy with what it does. Check it works how you expect it to. Start with small numbers and then kind of work up and take care to think about the size of your image files. Thank you very much. And in our final episode, I'll be showing you how with the API, we can make the calls to the back end to actually mint these things. And I'm going to go into some detail on the website side as well. And yeah, I can't wait to see you there. Thank you all very much for your support. This has been great. And uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you.